All right, good morning, everybody. Rub those Monday sleepies from your eyes. It is a twofer today. We are preparing for Investigation 5, but we also better do a little bit of review on Lesson 51. So let's see what we got going on this morning. So this should look familiar from Lesson 51 because I started off explaining two-digit multiplying is just two separate multiplying problems added together. If you were going to go and try to add 72 times 14, well, you're just basically multiplying 72 times 10 because that's the digit the ones place holds. And you're going to add that answer to 72 times 4. But I think some people just watched about the first 30 seconds of this because I saw some people actually attempting to do two-digit multiplying like this. And that was not what we talked about later on in the lesson. People need to be focused. So the big thing that I want to reiterate here, you line the numbers up straight on the right side. You do not dangle any digits when you are doing real two-digit multiplying. If I was multiplying 82 times 54, I'm not even worried about the 5 right now. I'm going to start with the digit in the 1's place, and I'm going to go 4 times 2. Well, what is 4 times 2? Hopefully everybody here in the room knows, hey, that's 8. Then I'm going to multiply the other digit by 4. 4 times 8. Well, what's 4 times 8? Hopefully you know that's going to be 32, right? So we have 328 for our first answer. Before we start multiplying again, make sure you always write in a zero because when we start multiplying by this five, he's not really five, he's 50. So we're done multiplying by that four. If you want to cross them out, feel free to go ahead. Now that we have our zero written in, we just have to think of this as 82 times 5. But the big thing, you need to keep your rows of numbers nice, neat, and straight for when we add the two answers together. Are we ready? Let's start. We're going to start off 5 times 2. 5 times 2, that's 10. I'm going to write in my 0, and I'm going to carry my 1, right? Nice, neat, and straight. My next digit I'm going to multiply. 5 times 8. Well, 5 times 8 is 40, but I carried that 1, so that's going to give us 41. So I'm going to write down my 1. I'm going to write down my 4. I'm going to say it one more time because I can't say it enough. You want to make sure you keep your rows of numbers in your two answers nice, neat, and straight because it's going to go and mess with you when you try to add them. So here's the answer when we went 82 times 4. Here's the answer when we went 82 times 50. Just go and add your two answers together. 8 plus 0, hey, that's going to give us 8. 2 plus 0, that's easy enough, that's 2. 3 plus 1, that's going to give us 4. And now nothing plus 4 more, that's going to give us 4. For a grand total of 4,428. Nice, neat, straight. Do not dangle any digits. So, the other thing people were definitely struggling on when we're talking about the distributive property, showing two different ways of multiplying. So, you always got to think of that second digit you're multiplying by of splitting it in half. The first one we are multiplying after we split the number apart is 72 times 10. And we're going to add that answer to 72 times 4. So 
So let's take a look here. We're going to see this problem over and over and over again, where it says Tuan needed to multiply 25 by 24. He thought of 24, the second digit, as 20 plus 4. And then it says, using the distributive property, show two choices Tuan has for multiplying the numbers. Well, the first choice would be the easiest one. If you're multiplying 25 times 24, you're just going to set up and multiply it the usual, regular way. 25 times 24. But for the second way, again, Tuan is splitting his second number. He wants to use the distributive property this time, so he's going to think as 24 as 20 plus 4. So, so if you're splitting 24 apart and think of it as 20 plus 4, first you would have to multiply 25 times 20, put it in parentheses, then you would want to multiply 25 times 4. So, the two different ways to show how to multiply, the normal, usual way, 25 times 24, or if you split 24 in half, you could think of it as 25 times 20 plus 25 times 4. You're going to see this type of problem every single day for months. So that was the review on to our Investigation 5 preparation. Today we're all about organizing and displaying data. And what data is is a fancy name just for a group of numbers. And there's three different terms that I want us to be ready for because we're going to be working with these terms a lot these next upcoming months. And the first one is mode. The definition of mode is the number that appears the most times in a data set. The number that shows up the most when you have a group of numbers. So if I have a data set or a group of numbers like this, 2, 5, 1, 12, 13, 2, 8, 9, what number shows up the most? Well, I have a 2 that shows up twice. So when they're asking you to list mode, median, and range, you always want to have them labeled. So in this case, if they're asking us for the mode, we can say that the mode equals 2. Because 2 is the number that shows up most often in this data set. So again, but sometimes there can be more than one mode. Let's take a look. I did one little thing extra to this data set here. So two still shows up two different times. I got a two and a two. But in this case, I also have a one and a one. So sometimes there can be more than one mode. And that's fine. We'll just go and list out both modes. In this case, mode equals 1 and 2. There's going to be two modes sometimes. There could be three modes. If the numbers are tie, you list them all. The number that shows up most often. If you don't remember what these words mean, they are all listed in your glossary. The next one I want to talk about is probably the most labor-intensive. It's called a median, and it's the number that appears exactly in the middle of a data set after it's been arranged from least to greatest. Don't take a look at a group of raw numbers like this and just say, oh, 13 is the one that lands in the middle. You have to arrange the numbers first from least to greatest. So, my smallest number I have here is a 1, then I have a 2, but then I have another 2, so he's tied, then I have another 2, then I'm going to have a 5, 
and so on and so on until the numbers are in order from smallest to biggest, from least to greatest. So if you were following along, I have nine numbers lined up here. So if it's an odd number, it makes it really easy to find. What well, half of nine is four and a half. So I can section off four numbers there. I can section off four more numbers over here on this side. So the median, the number in the middle, after it's arranged from least to greatest, the median equals five. When you go and type in your answers in your Socrative quiz this morning, though, you won't have to label it. You can just type in the number. So one extra little thing I want to toss in about medians, though. If you have an even amount of numbers, you have to find the average of the two numbers in the middle. Do you remember average from less than 50? That's when you would add the two numbers, and because I'm adding two, then I got to divide that answer by two. So again, I have a raw set of data here, just a group of numbers. If I'm looking for the median, I first have to go and arrange them from least to greatest. So let's go and do that. So this time I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers here. I couldn't go and find what's in the middle because 10 divided by 2, that's 5. I would have 5 numbers on this side, and I still have 5 numbers over here on this side, right? So I got to use the 2 numbers that are in the middle. I have to find the average of the 2 numbers, add them together, and then divide by 2. Well, hey, what is 5 plus 7? 5 plus 7, that's easy enough. That's 12. So I added them. So after I add the two numbers, I want to divide by 2. What's 12 divided by 2? That's easy enough. That's 6. So if I was doing my assignment in the book, I'd say the median equals 6. If I'm taking my Socrative quiz, I can just type in the number six. I don't have to label it on the Socrative quiz. And our last one today before we get into Socrative is the range. And the range is the difference of the greatest and the least number in a data set. Basically just means subtract the biggest and the smallest number in the group. So what is the biggest number that I have here in the group? Do you see it? I think it's right here with 13. What is my smallest number in the group? That's going to be right here with 1. So again, 13 is my largest number in that data set. 1 is my smallest number in the data set. To find the range, you just subtract the biggest and the smallest number in the data set. 13 minus 1, that's easy enough. That's 12. And there will only be one range every time. And that, my friends, is the end so far. There's a short little Socrative quiz just to make sure everybody's on the right page. When you finish, either work on any math lessons that you still may have out or on your math after tests until everybody's ready to start the investigation.